Could this be the next evolution in airsoft guns for 2014 and beyond? We're gonna find out in this episode of The Gear Guide. Okay, I gotta admit, when I heard that ASG was gonna be building an AEG outside of the normal area and going to their factory at their corporate office in Denmark, I was a bit on the skeptical side. I was thinking, all right, well, this thing's gonna be an average gun. It's not gonna be that great. It might fall flat because think about it. You're taking the knowledge where the knowledge center is in Southeast Asia and bringing this to a whole different market. Well, let me tell you what, I was pleasantly surprised when I actually got my hands on the Scorpion Evo 3A1. Externally, this thing looks so good. There is zero wobble. The build is fantastic. You can just look and see that the nylon fiber polymer they used in this build is insanely good. And there's a few parts that are metal as well, but they are metal on the real one. It even has a lot of the factory molding and markings that the real Scorpion has. And of course, you know, the license is held by ASG and I'm almost certain they used the mold for the real Scorpion. And if I didn't know better, the real polymer to build this gun out. So starting at the front, underneath this handguard here is where the battery goes, and you'll need to get a really kind of special battery, ASG sells them, to fit inside of here, but it's no concern. It takes a couple tries, and once you figure it out, it's easy to get in there, but you access it by removing the flash hider. It unscrews in this front end, just slides right off, and then also allows you to get to the sling attachment point and the actual bolt here, the actual charging handle, to do the ambidextrous swap over. So if you want to move it on the left side like I have here, or you want to move it over to the right, you can move both pieces pieces over no problem. Once you have the front back on and you move to the body of the gun, you can lock back the charging handle to expose the hop up. Now inside it's a little different. It's a dial type, but it actually has an Allen key. I was originally concerned about this when I first looked at it. I was like, oh, I can't even get my hands in there to adjust it that well. But when I looked closer, I saw that it had an Allen key in there and I think it's seven millimeter and you should be able to adjust it no problem by just putting the key in there and twisting it. That's a great little touch. I'm glad they went that way with it. And then of course, to release this, you press the button on the side and it slides forward but that button has more than one use it not only just releases the bolt door to go forward it also allows you to start firing the gun once you put a new magazine in and that's a great little neat touch they put in here that's something you only found on system of PTWs when your magazine runs empty you put a new one in then you actually have to hit the bolt release to start firing again. So it's one of those familiar features for those of you who use real firearms, you know, new magazine in after the last shot, you have to do that to get the bolt back in the ready position to begin using the weapon again. And that magazine release, I really like what they did with it too. It's also reachable very easily with your pointer finger, but it's also the way they put the grooves on it use with your thumb so you have two real simple ways to get this thing in and out and the mag well is flared so it makes for mag changes just like you saw there extremely easy without even having to look moving back to the hand grip itself it is oversized it's huge and the bottom is really fat so it gives you a way to hold onto this thing and not drop it but if your hands are small or large it's going to fit and then finally of course the fire controls back here you actually have four options you have safe semi three round burst and full auto, and that three round burst is so awesome. But we're gonna get to that when we start talking a little bit about what's under the hood. Now, of course, across the top, you've got this flat top rail. Now, I've added these sights and this optic. This thing does not ship with sights or the optic or the foregrip for that matter, but all those accessories are gonna be ready after the fact with the real steel, like the real ones, iron sights, as well as the hand stop and a few other accessories. And then moving on to the back, past the double-sided sling attachment points here on the rear, you get the stock. Now what's really neat about this stock is it's not only just folding where it gets to the side and gives you this really compact package for a submachine gun, it also has a very long length of pull. This thing goes way out so you actually can get down in your gun and not feel like you're too close. It's one of the challenges I've seen with a lot of SMGs that you don't get a really long length of pull. You're stuck with something very short like this and you feel like you gotta get really down on it and you feel like you're a little too close to the weapons platform. But if you don't like the stock, there's another neat trick too. Here in the back where the quick release spring guide, where you can actually get to the spring, you can press it in and then slide the stock right off. So then it gives you this fantastic little pistol with no stock and it lowers the weight even further. Then of course, there's that little feature I showed you about and we're gonna talk about that when we get to the internals right now. So under the hood, there's also a couple really cool features that they've added to this gun and all of it centers around what they chose for the fire control system. 
they actually reached out to the guys that make the ASCU to actually build the internal electronics for this gun. So you have a fully programmable, intelligent MOSFET system in here that uses micro relay switches and all kinds of intelligence to run this gun. And let me tell you what, that is the neatest part. It not only gives you that three round burst, which will continue firing after you pull the trigger. So you can pull it once and those three shots will continue. It won't interrupt, but it gives you great trigger response in full auto. And then the semi-auto is insane. It is off the chain responsive. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the closest thing I have fired to a $2,000 system of PTW when it comes to trigger response for a stock AEG. And that is so amazing. And it's not just that trigger response you get too. the actual MOSFET system is active braking. So you get that quick start, that quick stop, and you don't even really need an anti-reversal latch inside this gun. It is such a great responsive little pistol or submachine gun for that matter. I just can't say enough about how good it feels to shoot. But there is one downside with that system. You've got to remember, and there's actually a sticker in here that tells you about it too. Don't leave the battery plugged in because it is active braking. It's always pulling from that battery and you can kill your battery. So for you guys who use Polar Stars and such that are familiar with that process, it's not a big deal. Just remember, just like the sticker says and just like the manual says, take that battery out after you're done playing for the day. Also, the other great feature under the hood is the quick change spring system. When I say quick, I mean quick. You take that stock off like I have here, you hit it right here with an Allen key or a flathead either way and bang springs out. I mean, you have to take nothing off except that stock. And you saw how easy that was when I did it a couple seconds ago. So if you guys want to tune this thing down from its stock FPS, which we're going to see in the chrono section here in a minute, or you want to tune it up to, I don't know why you would, to something beastly, you can tune this thing to whatever your field limits, no matter where you play. Now taking this thing out to the chrono, we were really surprised to see the FPS in this gun. Actually, even with a little settling, we actually got quite a few shots in. This thing was shooting a little over 400 FPS, but fear not, I think it's gonna settle down to right around 400. We've seen a few other of these guns out there in reviews and seen that they've actually settled to right at like 398 or 397. But don't worry, if it is a little too hot for your local field, you can swap that spring out, take it out, cut a coil, do whatever you need to do, or you can put in any of the other springs that ASG, or for that matter, any other airsoft gun takes because it does take standard AEG springs for the internals. Also, rate of fire was really healthy at over 18 a second on the ASG 11 one volt LiPo. So you're gonna get this fantastic rate of fire, this great trigger response, and of course the FPS to go with it right at that 400 mark. And I think that's due to the motor they put in here. It's a really torquey, high magnetism motor. I think it's one of ASG's special motors in here. I'm not sure if it's a new magnet or it's just one of their really good ones, but let me tell you what, I think that along with the gears and their custom mech box, which by the way, does take standard version two parts on almost everything under the hood, is going to give you all together that insane responsiveness and that great power. And then moving to accuracy as well, this thing surprisingly shot very far and straight. I guess it's the hop up and the tuning they did or just the fact that this was all built in house under their watchful eye, this thing was so good. It actually shoots a lot farther than you would think for such a short barrel gun. I was looking forward to the suppressor adapter, the 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread adapter that goes on this because the threads are a little larger to add a longer inner barrel. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think you're gonna need it. I mean, even for outdoor play, this thing can hold its own against AEGs with barrels almost twice as long. Now, with all that said, there are just a couple little minor things I would like to see changed on this gun. And the first is the fire selector and I've actually spoke with ASG on this and they are gonna work on getting this one resolved, is the fire selector's a little sloppy, a little loose. So you really have to move both sides because it is ambidextrous. So it works functions on the right and the left side. It is a little lacking and it's a little tough to get at times semi-auto. And then the other thing is the magazines. I know the size limitation is obviously one thing because they're matching the real Scorpion Evo 3, but they are limited to 75 rounds, which is kind of low if you guys are playing big outdoor skirmishes. Now they do sell three packs of magazines, which is a great thing, but I would love to see like a little mini high cap or something with a little more capacity in here to make it work. But again, that's on the wish list and that doesn't detract from a gun that let's face it, I'm gonna be taken to Milsom events and shooting in semi anyway because of that amazing trigger response. So bottom line, I don't say this much, 
this is probably one of the absolute best guns I have tested and used to date short of a PTW and it even gives a really close run for the money on a PTW because it takes standard V2 parts almost all internally. Take a look at the Scorpion Evo 3A1. This is a fantastic gun. It does come in a little high on the price point for most of the average airsofters at around $450 US, but let me tell you what, this thing performs way above its price point. So guys, if you wanna pick one of these up, they're gonna be in limited runs because they are hand built, so you better get on it and you can pick them up anywhere ASG products are sold.